The seven dimensions of ministry ambazo Yesu alifanya akiwa hapa duniani maana mimi naamini we should not make church something that it is not He is the chief cornerstone Yesu ndiye msingi imara yeye ndiye kupitia yeye tunafaa kujenga kanisa juu yake Lakini siku hizi kwa sababu ya demands za watu na matamanio ya watu sijui kama tunaweza pata ule mstari unasema kuna vasi inasema ati siku za mwisho watu watajiinulia waalimu watakao wafundisha kile wanataka kusikia na unapata sasa watu wanatafuta kama kuna nchi sitaki kuitaja ni gani lakini nchi hiyo nilipata muhubiri akifungua kanisa a, anatuma kitu kinaitwa questionnaire kwa nyumba za watu kwa nini hauendangi kanisa na kwa hivyo watu wanajaza sababu zile hawaendi kanisa. Oh unajua mahubiri yenu ni marefu sana kama mngepunguza ninaweza kuja kanisa. Ah nyimbo nyimbo kama zingekuwa baada ya dakika 30 ziwe dakika tano. mimi naweza kuja kanisa. Unajua kama mungekuwa muna mahali tunaweza kuwa tuna smoke tukiwa kanisani tunatoka tunavuta sigara ah ingekuwa vizuri. Unajua sisi mi huwa na kunywa kama ningepata mahali afternoon kwa kanisa kuna kabaa mahali ambapo we can be discussing with my friends uh, mambo ya biashara ningependa kuja kanisani lakini sasa kanisa nyingi hazina kama mungepata uh, kukubalia watu ambao ni, wa, ni ni homosexual kwa kwaya na tuwaone pia wakiwa kwa wanaongoza ibada pale mbele mi ningeenda kanisa. Kwa hivyo mtu anaanza kanisa mchungaji anaenda anaketi chini na hayo majibu ya watu. Na what they are doing now, they are starting churches based on what people want. Kwa hivyo unaenda unaangalia majority ya watu wamesema hawataki uh, mahubiri ya zaidi ya dakika ishirini. Kwa hivyo tutafanya hivyo. Majority ya watu wamesema tuwe na mahali pa kuvuta sigara. Kwa hivyo tutakuwa na hiyo. Majority ya watu wamesema tuwe na mahali watu wanaweza kukunywa kidogo tutakuwa na hiyo. Majority wamesema kwaya iwe na homosexuals kwa hivyo turuhusu homosexuals. Sasa kanisa linafunguliwa na linajaa watu. Maana watu wametimiza kile ambacho ama pastor ametimiza kile ambacho watu wanataka. Na kwa that has been the challenge ambayo tuko nayo in our times. Mahubiri unapata kwa madhabahu sio mahubiri healthy. Chakula kile tunapeana kwa madhabahu kinakuwa sio chakula healthy kwa sababu hatufuatilii ni mambo gani Yesu alifanya hapa duniani. Na hii wiki ninazungumzia the dimensions of Jesus ministry. Number one, kama unaandika mahali Jesus had a ministry of deliverance. Alikomboa watu waliofungwa na mapepo. Na kwa hivyo kanisa linafaa liruhusu deliverance. Watu wakuje wafunguliwe wakombolewe Watu wamefungwa na mapepo wawekwe huru katika madhabahu ya Mungu. Na kwa hivyo kunafaa kanisa liwe na wakati wa kuombea watu wakombolewe. Maana mapepo yote yalitolewa na Yesu ilibidi ya waombe. Hakuhubiri tu pamoja na kuhubiri he delivered people from demons. So every church inafaa iwe na platform ya kuombea watu. Maana kuna watu watakuja na wana, wamefungwa na mapepo na kupitia kuwekelewa mikono watafunguliwa. Eh, amen. Number two, Biblia inasema and Jesus taught them. Kwa hivyo jambo la pili ya huduma ya Yesu ni kwamba alifundisha, he taught. Kanisa linafaa liwe na mafundisho. Ukiangalia katika mistari mingi utapata kwamba he taught the people. But nowadays watu hawataki mafundisho. Watu wanataka Uh, tuchekeshwe kidogo tuwe na comedian tuimbe sana tuombe sana lakini tukija mafundisho unaona watu hawafurahii na nikasema jana wakati tunaenda hata crusade ama ibada 
ikiwa iko moto kabisa tumeimba watu wote muhubiri akiitwa kuzimama unaona kuna watu hawawezi kusikiliza neno na nikasema waimbaji nikawaongelesha jana na watu wale wanapenda kuchukua simu pasta akisimama wakati huo mwingine kila mtu wako sawa eh muhubiri akisema nataka tufungue neno ndio watu wanaanza shughuli for you to be a healthy believer you need to be taught the word of god leo natani zungumzie ministry of winning souls hebu andika mahali kama kuna kitu Yesu aliwekea mkazo sana ni kuwin watu ambao the lost souls watu ambao wamepotea na kwa hivyo kila kanisa linafaa liwe na strategy ya kuleta watu ambao hawajaokoka waingie katika nyumba ya Bwana na kwa hivyo mniruhusu tuingie katika neno la Bwana nifundishe kutoka kwenye kitabu cha Luka 5 mstari wa 30 the book of Luke chapter 5 verses 30 bidai nasema And the scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples saying why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners verse 31 and Jesus answered and said to them those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick ati mtu ambaye ana afya hahitaji daktari lakini mgonjwa anahitaji kutibiwa na bible inazidi kusema verse 32 I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to what? Repentance. Nitakupatia mambo kadhaa Yesu alisema if you are writing about four things Jesus really put emphasis on concerning winning of souls. Are you ready? Number one, andika hiyo. Number one, he came for sinners. The reason why Jesus came and died the main reason maana sometimes huwa tunasahau hakuja anipe gari unaweza pata gari bila Yesu siku na inchi watu hata hawaombi Yesu na wana magari so it is always good to know why Jesus came the purpose of his coming he came on earth for the reason of the lost soul lakini sasa shida yetu tuna emphasize a lot about other things na kwa hivyo every believer kama hakika umeokoka utakuwa na mzigo wa kuhubiria watu waokoke write that down it is very important kama hakika umeokoka wewe na hakika unamwamini Yesu Kristo kama kuna kitu tunafaa tuweke mkazo zaidi ni mtu kuokoka kama kanisa ni la kweli na hili kanisa kabisa mhubiri anasema ameitwa kitu ya kwanza anafaa awe nayo ni evidence of winning souls maana i came not for the righteous but for the sinner the physician the the, the 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 sick are the ones that need a physician but those that are healthy they don't need a physician the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 18 verses 11 for the son of man has come to save that which is lost The son of man has come to save that which is lost. Yesu akasema nilikuja ili niokoe wale wamepotea. Kwa hivyo kulingana na Yesu watu wengi wamepotea na akaja hapa duniani ili awaokoe to save a soul. Jesus came on earth in order he may save in order to save the lost that have been lost. Kwa hivyo kwa familia yetu kuna watu wamepotea. Kwa jamii zetu kuna watu ambao they are lost. They are no longer in the fold of God. Na kwa hivyo Yesu anasema I came to save the lost. So look at the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. I'm trying to lay some ground. Ni kuonyesha Yesu akizungumza mambo haya yote anazungumzia umuhimu wa wewe ukiwa umeamini kuwa mtu ambaye utajaribu kugeuza wengine waache dhambi. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 Yesu akasema Then he said to them, "Follow me, I will make you what? Fishers of men. You are a fisher of men." Kulingana na ulimwengu wa kiroho. Oh pastor mimi sio bishop. Oh pastor mimi sio apostle. Oh pastor mimi sio mtume. Mimi oh mimi sio evangelist, but the Bible says you are a fisher of men. Kwa hivyo mtu akikuuliza wewe ni pasta hapana mimi si pasta but I'm a fisher of men. It is a title. Jipatie hiyo. Hey, amen. 
Hata kwa Facebook jiite the fisher of men. Hallelujah. Unajua kuna watu unajaribingi kufikiria wewe ni nani? How fit kwa hizi fivefold? Wewe sio prophet, wewe sio teacher, wewe sio nani? Eh? Pastor, wewe sio <laughs> apostle. Hata watu wanakupatia patia majina na una, "Hey mimi siku wangi pastor, then who are you? A fisher of men." Today I declare to all of you, you are fishers of men. Kuna title umepewa na Yesu. Na hii watu wengi hawajiiti. Maana haina haina kick. Unajua ukisema maposto right left reverend ina kick. Lakini <laughs> ukisema I'm a fisher of men. Ah. Haina 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 nini? Uzito. But the Bible says follow me and I will make you what? Say ev- so every follower of Jesus is a fisher of man. You are supposed to fish men. Kama kuna kazi umepewa hapa duniani ni kazi ya kuvua samaki na samaki hao ni wana wanadamu. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. Then he said to his disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are what? few. Ati mavuno yako tayari. Lakini hakusema the pastors are few. Hakusema the apostles are few because they are very many. Hey, hello. Especially kama kuna county iko na mapasta wengi ni Nakuru. Nakuru has very many pastors because this is a revival town. Hii ni town ya revival. Mimi nimehubiri Mombasa na mapasta sio wengi. Hakusema the apostles are few. Hakusema the bishops are few because we have very many bishops. Hakusema the the evangelists are alisema the laborers. Mtu ambaye atakubali kufanya kazi kwa sababu ya kingdom ya Mungu ni wachache. Watu wengi wanaona kama ni waste of time. Watu wengi wanaona kama ni kupoteza muda. Watu wanataka ma ofisi iko na AC na kiti inazunguka. Do you know the upcoming ministers? Picha yao ya ministry ni kuwa kwenye kiti mahali na unazunguka hapo na uko na ka TV unafinya finya. Hey, hello na unakunywa ka juice. Na siku hizi mnaona mpaka eclairs. Hizi uh, chocolate zinaletwa kwa madhabahu. But I have come to tell you if you can labor in God's work. We have not been called to be celebrities. We have not been called to become what? Celebrities. We are called to labor in God's kingdom. Na kama unatamani kuwa pasta na unafikiria kuwa pasta ni kukula chocolate na kukunywa juice na kukuwekewa carpet. Hey, hello. Na kusalimiwa na heshima. Then you're in the wrong place. Enda kwa kariya ingine kama ya nini. Kariya ingine ikona hiyo. Lakini ya uhubiri, the Bible says the laborers are few. Sio watu wengi wanakubali hii kazi. Mana kazi ya kufikia watu wa okoke, hakuna carpet, hakuna chocolate, hakuna soda, ni upiga barabara upigwe na vumbi. Hiyo ndiyo kazi. Kwa nini ya msemi, amen. Wajua kuna wakati nilihubiri muji moja unaitua Albany, New York. Tukiwa na my friend anaitua Tico Alberto. Mambo ya kuhubiri kwa street si kuanza juzi. Nilianza when I was 19 years of age. Nimezunguka mudhurua, nimezunguka everywhere. So many places in Nairobi. So one day I was in, nilipoenda kusoma u- u- ulaya, nikashikana na mzungu moja niliona akoradiko. Radiko anataka tupige kerele, nikaona huyu ndiyo mzuri. Tuka, tukaenda tukanunua tuvitu, tuliko tunakanyaga. Kakitu kwa nakaka stool, unapanda juu kwa street. Unapiga kerele pale, unaambia, ye, yeah, mahubiri yake ilikuwa makali sana, ikuwa kama yangu. Yake ilikuwa nasema, muta kufa. <laughs> muta angamizwa, muta chomwa. Sasa nikaona lakini ana, ana ile ta, kutamani, kuhubiri. So tukaenda na ye, hata nilikuwa na hizo video. Tunasimama kwa barabara, tukiwa na yeye. Ninapanda kwa stool yangu na ye yake. Arafu wa watu wako manamaduka man, hapo, wanapigia polisi simu. So naona how police wa New York wanaendanga na baisikeli zengine nzito nzito baisikeli ya kawaida. So unaona polisi wawili naona ni, kama siku moja niliona polisi wawili wamekuja wakanisimamisha. Wakanipatia warning wakaniambia ukiendelea kuhubiri we are going to arrest you because watu hawa waduka wanasema unapiga kerere. Uzuri wa Ulaya they can't arrest you without warning you. So wakisha ni warn na hama na kasturi yangu naenda mahali kwingine. 
maana at least they should give you one warning one before they arrest you so tena hapo nimehubiri wengine wanakuja hawanijui <laughs> wananiambia we are giving you warning nashuka na kasturi yangu naenda street ingine. that is what we used to do siku moja tukaambiana na huyo Chris Tringali akaniambia kuna wachawi wamekuja wamekodisha hall kubwa wanaonyesha watu uganga wao wazungu kuna uchawi wana, wana vitabu vyao akaniambia twende tulipe tuingie huko do you know tuliingia kwa wachawi mimi sijaiona wachawi wazungu And kwanza ni yale nilipia sijui kama ilikuwa dola 15 tukaenda na zile gospel pl- zinaitwa nini cards akaniambia kila kitabu zile za magic za nini za uchawi unaweka hiyo kwa kitu ndani unajifanya unasoma unafungua unaweka hiyo kwa kitu inasema Jesus is Lord repent your sins unaiweka hapo na unarudisha kitabu akaniambia tukimaliza na vitabu twende sasa tuhubirie watu hao wamekuja kununua urogi maana urogi unauzwa nilienda hata kuna mahali pamoja nilisimama nilishtuka na huyo huyo anakuambia ana, ana wana uwezo wa kuona mtu wako na energy. Kwanza walikuwa wameweka picha ya Benihin hapo. Wamempiga. Nyuma yake amejaa mwangaza. Wanasema hawa watu sababu ile unaona wanaponya watu kuna energy wanakuanga nayo. So unaenda hapo unapigwa, wanapigwa picha wanaonyeshwa wao oh, hawana. Wengine inaonekana kidogo. <laughs> na mimi nasimama hapo. Kwanza hapo Chris aliniambia wewe acha kusimama sana hapo hubiria watu. Maana nilikuwa nimeshangaa. Nikapata mwingine anainua mtu. Unajua ile ya Wahindi ile ya kuinuliwa hapa chini hakuna kitu na hakuna mtu unalala hivi unainuliwa anakuinua hivi. Anafanya nguvu na hizi vitu msisema ni fake ziko. Mimi nilishangaa mpaka unaangalia chini hakuna. Hakuna kitu ndio unaona wajua wachawi wa kule na wahuku wana njia zao wahuku wanafanya watu wa kule nyasi na wafule tumbo na wa kule Tulizunguka, tumehubiria watu mpaka ma- ya mwisho ilikuwa tuhubiria wachawi wenyewe. So tunazunguka tunasimamisha mtu ambaye amekuja huko tunamwambia sisi tu ni wainjilisti, tumekuja kukupatia neno la Bwana, tunamuongelesha, tunampatia kakadi aende asome kuhusu Yesu. Finally, the last part ilikuwa ya kuhubiria wachawi wenyewe. Tulisubiri sasa wako karibu kufunga, tukaenda kwa kila mchawi. Unasikia mmoja anacheka, mwingine anatusikiliza lakini hakuna aliyokoka. So ni vizuri kusema ukweli. Hakuna mchawi. <laughs> hakuna mchawi aliyokoka. May you become a laborer today. Can I tell you one day you are going to leave this earth. Utaondoka hii dunia. Napenda nikiwa huko nje kusema hivi. Kuna vitu vinanunuliwa na pesa na kuna vitu ni Mungu peke yake anaweza akakupa. Pesa inaweza nunua kitanda lakini usingizi unapeanwa na Mungu. Pesa inaweza nunua dawa za kukunywa lakini afya inapeanwa na Mungu. Pesa inaweza nunua nyumba kama hii lakini amani ya kukaa kwa hiyo nyumba ni Mungu hupeana. Utakaposimama mbele ya kiti cha enzi. Kuna mtu hata mmoja ataonekana binguni kwa sababu yako. Kuna watu wataingia binguni wa familia kwa sababu ulilipa gharama ya kuwahubiria. Ulifanya mikutano ya kuwahubiria. Ulifasilitate Wahubiri waje wahubiria watu wenu kama kuna mama alikuwa ananiita nyeri kila mwaka anachukua hawa vijana wote mateenagers wa hiyo familia yao anawalipia hoteli anatafuta pesa kila mwaka zaidi ya elfu mbili analipa hoteli analeta hawa watoto wao wote wale wanamuita maanti hao wote hiyo rika yote anakuwa na wakati wa semina huko familia moja watoto wote hao mateenagers alafu anatuleta sisi wahubiri tuwahubirie na wanaokoka She was facilitating the salvation of those young people. Nimekutana na yeye juzi akaniambia sasa hao tulikuwa tunahubiria ni wamama waliolewa na harusi, waliokoka wakakaa kwa kanisa. Nilipoangalia huyo mama nikaona akifika binguni kutakuwa shangwe. Sasa mimi nauliza ni kitu gani ushaifanya ya kusaidia familia yenu ibadilike? Ni kuwaraumu tu. Eh hey, ulevi yako itakuwa. Tutakuzika wewe. Weka mau, endelea kukunywa. Unaona meno imetoka, shauri yako. Unaona macho yako vile iko ready hata huoni. Unajua utapotea macho kama huu. Sasa hiyo hiyo inamsaidia na nini? Anajua macho itapotea. Kwanza hata juzi kuna mmoja aliniambia ati wana watakunywa mpaka wakufe ili serikali ijenge rehab. Sasa wao wawe ndio saviors. Yaani walilipa gharama ya kukufa ili wengine wasaidike. 
Can you imagine mtu akisema hivi wacha nikunywe kabisa nikufe ili serikali itoe pesa ya kujenga rehab. Mimi naomba familia yenu you may you become a laborer in your family. Mama yako hataenda jehanamu. May you become a laborer. I say may you become a laborer in your own family. Ah si ukubali useme ya better amen. So kulingana na Yesu anasema every believer should be what? A laborer. Wacha nikupatie Mistari kadhaa but before then can you look at verse 38 He said to his disciples the harvest is truly ready therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out what laborers into his harvest Kwa hivyo tunafaa tuombe sana Mungu ainue laborers Hii lancha wa ninaomba kuinuke laborers Tuko na very many believers Tuko na very many pastors and bishops and apostles but we have very few laborers Na kama kuna kazi Yesu alifanya hapa duniani alikuwa anatembea sana ni kazi ya kuhubiria watu waokoke. Unakumbuka akihubiria Zakayo shuka kwa muti na Zakayo akaokolewa. Do you remember that? Nikodemas akaja kwake na usiku akaokolewa. Yesu alizunguka akifanya one, one on one evangelism. Alihubiria wengi sana. Philip akahubiria the eunuch Na the Ethiopian eunuch akaokoka Paul alizunguka akihubiria watu wakimjua Yesu Na kwa hivyo you can do it Don't wait to be a pastor You are a laborer Today I declare you are laborers in the vineyard of God Mutafanya ufalme wa mungu ujae Watu wataokoka because of you People will give their lives to God because of Mini nifurahia Musichana moja mesimama kwa ndege Na haku wogopa Akasimama akawaambia tubuni kwa ndege juu. Waki watch movie. Wacha itingishwe kidogo ndio hizo movie unasahau, wanasahau hizo movie. Kama kuna kitu mwanadamu anaogopa ni kufa. Hata ukitaka watu waokoke vizuri, enda saa zie matatu inataka kuondoka. Usimame hapo kwa matatu. Useme safari huanza na zingine zinatimia na zingine hazitimii. Paka ule alikuwa anakula unaona anakuangalia vizuri. <laughs> Maana wanadamu huwa waoga. Hawapendi kufa na wanajua wakifa wanaenda jehanam. Hey, hallelujah. Kwa hivyo mahali pale rahisi sana watu kuokoka ni mahali matatu zina watu wanapanda matatu. Unaenda kwanza hata yeye apo tuangeturusu, watu wataokoka wote, watapiga magoti hapo. Ndege huenda, zingine zinafika. Zingine hazifiki. Unaona watu wakisema baba tusamehe au wanangi hata muhubiri ule wa kuhubiri na kofia. Anaingia anga anasema wacha niwaambie Musipo towa sadaka, shauli yenu. Haujui mahali uenda, inabidi urudi kwa mfuko. Eh, uji ya wacha tuweka kwa kofia. Maana amepiga kerele, amesema tunaweza kosa kufika. May you become a laborer in Jesus name. Now, can I give you very quickly, how do you become a good laborer? How do you win souls in an easy way? Paul alitupatia njia ya kuapproach watu ili waokoke. Na leo natani wapatie, kulingana na Paul... Maana he was one of the greatest laborers in the kingdom of God. Kuna mambo Paul anasema ilimsaidia kubadilisha watu wengi sana wa mjue mungu. Na tutaanza na the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 18. Paul anasema, what is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel... I may present the gospel of Christ without charge. That I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. Number one, hatufai kulipisha watu wa okoke. Ata mutu wa kiokoka, usi muambia, sinimini likuombea. <laughs> Kohoa. We ungejua Yesu kama siyo mimi. Leta kitu. Usha ikutana watu wana kuambia hivyo. Kulengana bibiria, kuhubiria mutu wa okoke. Kuhubiria aso ije katika ufalme wa mungu Tunafaa tusiripishe Never charge Paul anasema When I presented the gospel I never charged it Na sasa hindi yo makosa imeingia katika kizazi chetu Iri ni kuombe toa elufu tatu It is wrong Kulingana na bibiria Bible inasema kuna mamlaka tumepewa tukiwa mitume Kuna mamlaka tumepewa tukiwa wachungaji Na hatufai we abuse that authority. Hiyo authority si fai kui abuse. Oh, hili uone pastor elfutano. 
Hiyo ndiyo mambo inafanyika sasa. People are abusing the authority they have been given by Christ. Kanisani unafaa uje, uketi kwa hiyo kiti na usilipishwe. Na ukitaka kuombewa, maombi ni bure, haifai kulipishwa. Sadaka ni wewe unatoa kwa hiari yako. Lakini si kuambiwa before mtume awaekere mikono. <laughs> Lazima ujitolee. Yeah. Kuna wekwa bahasha za elfu tano, elfu tatu, elfu kumi. Na hawezi enda pale mbele. Kwanza ni miona sikuizi ya tandoto zinalipishwa. Kama umiota ndoto, kuna bahasha ya ndoto. Ili tafsiriwe na pasta. So pasta ana, anafungua bahasha yako, anaona umetua miambiri. Anakuambia hii ndoto imekosa. Nimekosa njia. Haina meaning. Hizi ni ndoto. Tupirie mbali hiyo ndoto. Haina meaning. Ndoto ikiwa na elfu tano kuja kwa ofisi. Hii ndoto inaonyesha miaka tano ijayo utakuwa mtu mkubwa sana Kenya. Maana pesa hii Sikrizeni. Mimi ninaheshimu sadaka, ninaheshimu fungu za kumi, ninaheshimu matoleo. Lakini kitu ninasema we should not charge people. Maana watu wako kwenye viwango tofauti tofauti. Kuna mtu ataingia hapa ni tajiri na kuna mtu ataingia hapa hakukula jana. Lakini anapenda Mungu sana. Anaingia ibada tu abarikiwe. Mi nilienda siku moja lancha wa moja na robi. Kuitisha bahasha na kuto, ni kutakasemekana huwezi toa sadaka bila bahasha. Na vile ni kuwa nataka ni kuwa na mia moja nataka kujitolea. Mana I was a young man but poor. Ni kambua huku huwezi toa sadaka bila nini? Bahasha. Kwa hivyo ni kambia asha basi ni patie bahasha. The lowest was 300 shillings. Nikaita Asha nikamwambia mimi sina 300 niko na 100 nataka kujitolea. Akaniambia irudishe kwa mfuko. Usitoe. Nikairudisha kwa nini? Nikatoka. Hiyo lancha wa leo haivikangi watu hata 50 na ilikuwa inajaa mpaka watu wanasimama. Maana you are not supposed to abuse authority. Maskini yaingie kanisani, tajiri yaingie kanisani, hii kanisa sio ya Pastor Ben. It belongs to God. Munakumbuka Yesu waliingia akasema, "Mbona mnafanya biashara kwa nyumba ya baba yangu?" Na akasema, "My house shall be called the house of prayer." So every time you come to lunch wa hapa, you are coming to your father's house. Whether una pesa ama una pesa, this is your place. Keti hapo pokea neno, ukisikia kugaragara garagara, ukisikia kupiga nduru, wii, saba, piga ni zako. Kuna mtu atakuuliza Shida ni utoe nguo. Sasa hiyo tutakuuliza. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Ukisikia kuimba imba. Hata ukimba out of tone ni wewe na sauti yako. Hey, hallelujah. You are in your fathers. Na kanisa hatufai kuliweka na classes. Kanisa inafaa kuwa shule. Tunavaa uniform, mtoto wa tajiri na mtoto wa masikini ajulikani. Ama hamujui hiyo ndiyo sababu in uniforms ili introduziwa kwa shule. Ni hili hata kama mtoto ni watajiri na mtoto wa maskini wakivaa red water. Nani atajua? Nyote muna kana red zen. Nyote muna kana blue. Lakini wakiruhusu kila mtu wakuja na nguo zake kuna uli atakuja na suti na tai. Mukiwa high school. Na wawu nakuja na zezi meraruka raruka. Kanisa halifai kuwa na classes. Kanisa linafaa kuwa nyumba ya buwana. Na ukiwa tajiri ujiunganisha na vikundi vya ashering paka unaasha watu. Na we ni tajiri. Lakini kupata tu pesa kidogo unanunua probox unatoka kwaya. Huwezi imba tena maana ya probox. Unatusumbua hapa bure tu kwa sababu ya probox. Ah si msema amen. Msichana hajaolewa ni mzuri sana anaabudu. Ako kwa kwaya. Akiolewa <laughs> kwaya sio yake. Anaondoka kwaya sasa anaingia huku anasema wacha tuachie wadogo wadogo kwaya. Mi nasema mpaka uzee wangu nitahubiri kwa ma street. Until my old age. Hata niendeshe gari ya inagani hii dunia. My work as a laborer will continue. Na siku yanza juzi nilianza miaka ya zamani. Mi naomba ya kwamba hata upate mari, upate pesa, ujue mungu ni mkubwa kukuliko. Always remember that. Ukiingia kwa nyumba ya mungu wacha kuingia na maatitude. Tunambuwa nyanyua mikono yako. Unaiweka hivi. What is your problem? Inua mikono. 
Hati niwe ni mikono mbele za Bwana maana wewe ni tajiri unaiweka hapa. Tunaambua ruka kimasai. Ni pesa zinasumbua mtu. Ruka nini? Kwanza tukiambua teremka teremka. Hao wanangi watu wanafanya tu hivi. Hiyo ndiyo kuteremka. Anateremsha mababa. <laughs> ni mkubwa katika nyumba ya Mungu. Amekuwa mkubwa. Spiritual pride imeingia. Kwanza ukiokoka miaka mingi unasemanga watu wakijazwa na roho unawaangalia anga unasema <laughs> tulikuwa hapo. Kiburi Kuna mambo huwezi fanya katika nyumba ya Bwana, huwezi osha nyumba, kukapata shida pale, huwezi chukua hata kitu upanguze. Ah, hii tumepita hatuko viwango hivi. Nyumba ya Mungu ni nyumba ya baba yako. Na watoto wangu akiwa nyumba yangu they have to work. Hakuna mtoto anakuja hapo atiakae hivi anionyeshe. Ah, akiingia kwa nyumba yangu ni mtoto wangu. Ah, si msema amen. Kwa hivyo ukitajirika zaidi nyenyekea zaidi. Fanyia Mungu kazi zaidi. Eh, hey, amen. Haya andika. Kwa hivyo number 1 don't charge the gospel. Number 2. Kwa hivyo mtu yoyote unanitazama injili usiilipishe. Never charge the gospel. Unaambia watu ili ni kuona nikiwa pasa ili ni kutolea unabii toa kitu fulani. That is wrong. Unabii watu watolewe. Wakitaka kutoa sadaka watatoa. Maana ufalme wa Mungu unajitafutia mahali yake. Can I tell you the truth? I will never charge you here. Na hii kanisa itakuwa kubwa. Hii kanisa itakuwa tajiri na hii kanisa itajenga manyumba makubwa makubwa. Na sitawalipisha mtu kuingia kwa ofisi. Ati oh unajua tunawalipisha ili tupate pesa ya kulipa hall. Hii hall italipika. Maana sio yangu ni ya Yesu. Ukija kwa ofisi pale uwe maskini uwe tajiri ingia uone pasta. Number 2, kwanza manabii ndio huwa wanalipisha. <laughs> Kuna kitu nasikia Mungu ameniambia kukuhusu Lakini lazima nabii akule ashibe ili atoe unabii. Unamwambia okay sawa sawa kuna shida. Alafu anakutolea unabii. Na unabii ni ya ukweli. Na unaona imetimia lakini huyo mtu ameabuse nini? Authority aliyopewa na Mungu. Namba 2, mstari wa 19 unasema For though I am free from men, I have made myself a servant of all that I may win the more. Number two, Paul anasema, I became a servant to the people. Hawezi kuwa a laborer, a soul winner, if you have pride in your heart. Paul anasema, for me to win souls, I became a servant. The spirit of a servant rules somebody who is a soul winner. You cannot become a soul winner and you are proud. Paul anasema, so that I may be able to bring many to Christ. I did what? I became a servant to all. To how, how many? Now, unajua kuwa servant ni nini? Uko inje utabebewa tauro? Mina uliza hiyo maswali. Ndiyo nasema, kama ma, ma, mawazo yako ya kumutumikia mungu ni kupanguzu wa jasho. Uko na mutu wa kukupanguza jasho. Uko na mutu wa kukanyaga ukifunga kiatu. You cannot become a soul winner. A soul winner is a servant to all. Unaingia mpaka kwa mama ambaye anauza nyanya na matomato, unaketi karibu na yeye, unamuongeresha kuhusu Yesu Kristo. Unaenda kwa mechanic ambaye ni mchafu, unamukaribia mahali ya lipo, anakupatia stool, unakaa hapo, unampatia injili. You have to become a servant. If you are not a servant, you cannot be able to win souls. Number three. Verse 20 of the same verse, chapter, verse 20. And the Bible says, and the Jew, to the Jews I became what? A Jew, that I may win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I may win those who are under the law. Number three, you have to fit into people's lives. You have to fit into people's lives so that they may hear the word that God has given unto you. Sasa shida ni unaenda mahali unaona ba. Ukihubiri unanza kusema, hata hizi ba. <laughs> we kwanza unauza hiyo ba hapo, wewe utenda motoni. Sasa hiyo ni kukosa hekima. Paul alikuwa kifika mahali kuna ba haongei mambo ya ba. Unatafuta njie ingine ya kuongea. Tulipifika mahali baranabas kuna makahaba. Wanawake wengi makahaba walikuwa meketi mahali. Huwazi kuambia wa makahaba wote wataenda jahanam. Uza uza mwiri na utakuwa mugonjo ukufe. That is not the language. Ukifika kwa unawambia, umeumbwa kwa mfano wa mungu. Mungu hakuumba jehanam kwa mwanadamu. 
aliumba jehana mapepo yaende huko wewe uliumbiwa uende mbinguni sasa ukiwa na a condemning spirit you may not be able to reach to them maana ukiangalia wanawake wale walizunguka yesu some of them were prostitutes mary magdalene had seven demons she was also sickly and she was a prostitute kwa hivyo ukiwa very condemning una condemn kila mtu kama wenu wanavutanga sigara unamwambia oh, ndoa hiyo harufu inafanya anga ikauke zorobo shanda rabadaga rika sata ribo zeka oh shere bobo bo. kwanza akiingia akiwa mlevi kama wenu hey, hey, shanda raba kuna pepo inakausha anga ninailetea ninaikamea Cho, chomeka kwa moto chomeka 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 kwa moto unaona kama huyu anaondoka pole po basi ubaki na anga yako iliyofunguka eh anakuachia anga maana ni anaifunga hey hallelujah Mustana ako na lipstick huyo ni pepo akiweka human hair amerogoa mutashangaa mkienda binguni wengine walikuwa nakaa wakolino walikuwa washarati dangerous unaona nakaa hivi lakini mujanja <laughs> mujanja tena sana na wala mlikuwa mna hukumu mtawapata binguni upate alikuwa mtu holy mtu anaishi maisha matakatifu mi niliweka perfume siku zetu ulikuwa ukiweka perfume unaambiwa maana tulikuwa tunaambua inatengenezewa jehanamu mi nikiweka perfume nilikuwa najipulizia unasikia watu wanakuambia na wewe utaenda jehanamu na mimi siendi jehanamu na perfume haitanipeleka jehanamu na kuvaa jeans haitanipeleka jehanamu na kuvaa sharp shooter haleluya namaliza kwa kusema you need to fit into people's paul anasema i have become all things to all people so that i may win all na ya mwisho verse 22 verse 22 na ndio sababu muhubiri akiwa na moyo kidogo kanisa iweze kuwa kubwa wahubiri wale wana condemnation mingi kanisa yao inakuanga ndogo ukiingia na, na umeshuka ume, ume nini inaitwa nini rasta anakuita kwa ofisi kuja hizi rasta unajua zinamaanisha nini kama utakana na hizi rasta usikuja hii kanisa ukiingia na troza kuja Muhubiri anafaa mimi naambianga watu Yesu alihubiri na rinda firirida ile inaimbangwa ilikuwa ndefu mpaka hapa ndio alihubiri nayo tuache vita ya mavazi ati troza sijui earring sijui lipstick bado uko huko he basi wewe baki huko First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 22 to the weak i became what weak that i may win the weak i have become all things to all men that i might by all means save some ya mwisho you need to become weak so that you may win the people in your family wacha kujigamba watu wale wanajigamba people hate you to the weak ni kuonyesha watu oi ay 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 mimi sijui kama nitafika mahali umefika hiyo ndiyo kuwa weak eh amen watu wale dhaifu wale unaona hata ni maskini usiende kuambia hiki watu naona nimevaa ni nimetoka ni italy Ukiongea hiyo lugha you will never win the weak. Watu wale ambao hawana become like you don't have. Tumia ulimi wako na hekima. Become weak. Never show superiority over people. And that is a strategy for you to become a laborer. Don't become superior over people. Even a good leader. Unaona kiongozi mzuri ni yule ambaye haonyeshi watu nyinyi mko chini mimi niko hapa. Na ili mufike hapa niko mufanye 1 2 3 ili muwe kama mimi. We are followers of Jesus. The main person who who is a pace setter is not the pastor, is Jesus. Don't try to become like Pastor Ben. Become like Jesus. Ukifanyika kama Yesu maisha yako yatajaa kuburudika. Ukikaa na mimi ndio utajua niko na weakness. Unakaa na pastor anapiga kelele anatoa macho anakondoa macho unasema huyu ndiye anatuombeanga pale. Usifuate pasta, fuata nani? Maana ukikaribia Yesu eh, pasta unaweza kukuazika rahisi. Unasikia akikwambia hana pesa ya rent. Ah, unasema na vile ametuhubiria, amepiga kelele pale na hata nyumba haezi kulipa. Sasa huu ni mtu gani wa kufuata? Waacha kufuata mtu. Fuata Yesu. Maana sisi ni wanadamu, si unaona hata mapasa wanapata corona. Sasa ukifuata pasta apate corona. Ah, ya ya, alipata corona sasa sisi tumekwisha, tumekufa. Kuna mabishop wakubwa wamepata corona kama umeweka tumaini kwa mwanadamu utakufa moyo haraka weka tumaini kwa Yesu and today i want to release the grace of a laborer upon each and every one of us